I'm Steve Gander with Excellent Cultures. Today we're going to be talking about corporate culture, the culture of unity that celebrates diversity. By the time we finish this 12-minute presentation, you're going to know seven things that you probably don't currently know yet. First, you're going to know the corporate culture that guarantees maximum results. Because if we try to shift to diversity and we're not there yet without having the right culture, it could backfire on us. Secondly, the diversity that really matters to corporate culture and why it matters. Third, the difference between debilitating diversity and winning diversity. Did you know there's two kinds? Fourth, the most misunderstood word in corporate America, which is culture. I'll give you a hint. Fifth, workplace diversity. Is it a root or a fruit? Because if it's a root and you treat it like a fruit, it will backfire or vice versa. Sixth, the 10 crucial elements of the winning culture of unity that celebrates diversity. How do you do it? And then seventh, you'll have the opportunity to measure your culture against the world's best. So let's talk about the winning elements of today's top performing organizations. First and foremost, and most of you already know this, you've discovered it by competing in the marketplace that you're in. Winning cultures today, winning organizations are first of all, fast, second, mobile, third, quick to change, fourth, diverse, fifth, highly innovative, sixth, totally unified as teams, seventh, they hate losing, eighth, they love to win, and ninth, most of all, they are relentlessly committed to excellence. So let's talk about what shifted just in the last five to ten years that's making all of that more challenging than it ever has been. First of all, we've had a talent shift from talented individuals to diverse teams. You can no longer win with just talented individuals because it's the best team that wins. Secondly, there's been a compensation shift, especially if you have millennials and Generation Z working in your workforce, from wages and benefits to enjoyment. Every survey that you'll see today tells you that younger people would much prefer working in a culture that is about having fun and enjoying what they do, and they'll even take that above wages and benefits in many cases. Next. There's been a leadership shift from top-down to participative. Top-down leadership stopped working 10 years ago. Next, there's been a culture shift from engaged to transformed. Just having an engaged culture doesn't guarantee great success to your business. In fact, you could have everybody in the place standing around singing Kumbaya and go out of business if you have the right, wrong strategy. Next, We've had a shift in the geographical aspect as a result of the pandemic. We've shifted from centralized to virtual, and now maybe back to centralized again, but maybe virtual or maybe a combination. And then finally, we've had a structural shift from homogenous to diverse. So let's talk about this diverse subject. Anyone who has been around corporate America for any period of time knows for a fact that diversity without unity produces chaos. We've seen it in our streets most recently in society. But the culture that really wins is most demonstrated when you watch an NBA or a WNBA team operate because the basketball team has a culture of unity where diversity is celebrated rather than tolerated. Not long ago, I had lunch with Coach Dell Harris. Dell has coached five winning NBA teams, was once selected and awarded NBA Coach of the Year, was Kobe Bryant's first coach coming out of high school, was Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, their coach on the same team. Pretty amazing guy. When I asked him the question, what do you think about diversity and inclusion? You know what he said? He says, Steve, I really get into diversity. It works. But I don't know about this inclusion stuff. I really don't pay much attention to it. And I said, well, why is that, Dale? He said, because on a basketball team, the only color that matters is the color of your jersey. Why is that? That's because the focus of a winning team is about unity. And diversity comes as a result of that unity. So think about it a second. Do you want to have people in your organization who feel included? I remember when I was a youngster in the fifth grade, I was the fattest kid in the whole fifth grade. The way I got to be the fattest kid was because times were tough. We moved in with my grandmother, who was a strong Hispanic woman. She's actually the first woman pharmacist in our state. 
very dynamic, and she convinced us with a very strong authoritative tone that you needed to clean everything on your plate. Well, when you're cleaning everything on your plate and all you eat is beans and tortillas and rice, a solid carb diet, you get fat. I was the fattest kid in the fifth grade. Always got picked last for every single Sandlot team, whether it was basketball, football, baseball. I was always picked last because I was included. You know how being included causes someone to feel? It bothered me so bad that I finally went to the doctor and got a diet and was no longer the fattest kid in the fifth grade. So do you want a culture where people are included or do you want a culture where they are celebrated? I think you'll realize that celebration is a lot more powerful than inclusion. So let's talk about the most misunderstood word in corporate America, which is culture. Everybody talks about it. Think about it. Every place you go, somebody's talking about culture. In thousands of leaders that I've spoken to over the years, I've always asked the question, how many of you have ever looked up the definition of corporate culture? You know what they've told me? One person raised their hand, and that person had been to one of our workshops before. So, so nobody looks it up because they think they already know it. If you Googled the definition of corporate culture, you're going to get two definitions, one from Harvard, one from Cambridge in England, where they intersect. It's the beliefs that govern how people behave at work. So what do your people really believe that's governing how they behave. And within the framework of that belief, is workplace diversity a fruit or a root? By the time we finish, I think you're going to realize that diversity is not a root. It's a fruit. Winning cultures of unity that celebrate diversity don't celebrate it because someone is forcing them to do it. They celebrate it because they know that diversity wins. When diversity wins and it's about unity that produces winning, then all of a sudden diversity happens. We literally have case studies of businesses that we've served at Excellent Cultures who had no diversity strategy. They had a culture strategy that built a culture of unity and they won awards in diversity. CEOs were actually sitting in the room where the presenter was talking about their company to present them with, award, with an award and they didn't find out it was their company until they actually got the award. Can you imagine that? So diversity that works is a fruit. It's not a root. Unity is the root. So let's talk about the 10 key elements, the 10 key core beliefs that guarantee a winning culture of unity that celebrates diversity. You'll be interested in knowing that only one of these has the word diversity in it. First of all, what does your team believe about change and innovation? Do they love change and innovation because it helps them compete and improve? Or are they ducking from it because it's painful? or anything in between. What do they believe about accountability? Do they believe it's heavy-handed bosses poking people in the chest while everyone hides under the desk? Or are people raising their hands saying, can I be accountable for that? Would you please hold me accountable for that? Or anything in between. What do they believe about their own identity and importance? Do they, they see themselves as a critical component of a winning team? What do they believe about handling problems and emergencies? Whose job is it to fix this problem? What do they believe about leadership effectiveness? Who's a leader and who's just a follower? My definition of a leader is simple. Look over your shoulder and if people are following, you are one. If they're not, then you're not. What do they believe about leadership development? Are leaders developed or do we just hire them from outside and hope they work? What do they believe about their potential and their ability to do their jobs? Is it we're overworked and underpaid, so let's get whatever we can from whoever we can? Or is it we just need to learn more so we can do more? What do they believe about team unity and diversity? Do they believe that unity is what's more, most important to their team? Or are they forcing diversity because they think it's the political appropriate thing to do in this season? What do they believe about competition? Are they the NFL team in the postseason where everybody's linked together competing like crazy against the other guys? Or are they the NFL team in the preseason where everybody's competing against each other, backstabbing to get the coach's attention? And number 10, finally, what do they believe about handling problems and mistakes? Whose job is it to fix this? Very, very critical. Okay, time for a pop quiz. First question, true or false? Most leaders who believe we have a pretty good culture around here have an excellent culture. The answer is false. 90% of organizations that are successful actually are successful but have a defensive culture. They don't have an excellent culture. 10% do and the 90% who don't believe they do because they somehow put together their culture with the success of their business. 
All that means is we have a lot of successful businesses that are underperforming and could be a lot more effective. How about a multiple choice? Listen to these answers and you'll see them on your screen. An excellent culture, aka high performance culture, is one where A, corporate values are well defined and posted everywhere. B, the working environment is warm, comfortable, and inviting. C, all employees can recite the corporate mission statement. D, millennials and Generation Zs love to work there. E, employee engagement scores are high. F, employees are loyal, happy, and trust each other. G, all of the above. H, none of the above. What's the right answer? Who says G, all of the above? Well, the correct answer is none of the above. You could have all of these elements and still have an underperforming culture. So the big question is, do you have the culture of unity that celebrates diversity where performance and effectiveness is maximized? We're going to allow you to take advantage of a special opportunity on the house courtesy of Excellent Cultures. Visit excellentcultures.com slash CEO MRI and you'll have the opportunity to involve your team up to 10 leaders or more if you'd like in defining through a 10-minute online proven data-driven assessment that compares your culture against the best in the world. Take advantage of this. You want to do it.